Hey everybody, what is going on? This is Eric from Online Biz and in today's video we're talking about the top 5 micro SaaS platforms to build for in 2021 and 2022. Let's get into the video. Okay everybody, before we get started, if you haven't already, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like to get more content and hit that notification button so you know whenever I release new videos. Also, if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for a future video or for this video, just make sure to comment them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. Also, if you want to schedule a call with either me or Ruth, just make sure to check out the link to our Clarity profile in the description below. Now, let's get started with our topic for today. Top micro SaaS platforms for 2021 and 2022. In order to get started, let's first understand what is micro SaaS. You see, the thing is, when a platform gets big enough with enough users, usually they're going to open up a public API for other developers to help them build missing features. And this is how you can make some extra money. The good thing about it is that you're going to get much more free traffic and the marketing side of things is going to be much easier for you. It's going to be easier for you to acquire new customers. Now, the main disadvantage to micro SaaS is that sometimes you're going to have to pay commission to the big platform and usually you're going to be dependent on that platform. I'll give you an example. You can look at Android apps or Apple apps in the App Store. Different developers can develop different apps or games for different solutions and you can either download them for free or whatever. And then you can also make payment through these apps and then Apple or Samsung are going to get a cut from whatever you're paying the app developer and then the app developer gets everything that's left. Now, the big advantage is, is that these two companies, these two huge platforms have tons of users on their platform. So you as a developer don't really have to work that hard to get new users. On the other hand, if these platforms decide to shut you down, you're pretty much done. And that's an issue. Now, after we understand what Microsoft is, let's look at the few things you need to consider before deciding which platform is for you to build on. The first thing you need to look at is competition. For everything you want to build, and usually as these platforms get bigger, there are more than one solution doing the same thing for the same platform. For example, if it's an e-commerce platform, then they're usually there are going to be multiple apps doing customer reviews, for example. Now, if there is still low competition and there's only one or two apps doing that and you think you can do it better, great, go for it, build it. But if you go for a more mature platform, let's say Shopify, for example, and you just type in the keyword reviews, you're going to see tons and tons of reviews apps just on the first page and it's going to be almost almost impossible for you to win it over. So again, competition can be good and it can be bad. Just make sure that you're doing something unique if the competition is already there. As I mentioned, if there is some competition, that's fine as long as you're unique. I'll give you an example. If you just search the same app store that we talked about in Shopify for A-B testing, you're going to see there are pretty much like three or five apps doing that. So there's a good chance for you to win over if you have the better product, the better pricing, the better support, so on and so forth. Moving on to the next point, you need to do something you know and love. The reason this is important, if you are a user for a given platform doing something that helps you in either your business or your day-to-day, -day life, you know the pain as a customer. And then if you need it, you know that other people will also need it. So there's a good chance you don't have to do as much of uh, market research before jumping into this solution. Now, on the other hand, there are other platforms that are not related to you in any way. There might be some opportunity there, but you don't really know the market because you don't live it. I'll give you an example. I am not a designer. And if you look around, you'll see that there are a bunch of ecosystem with different marketplaces where you can find solutions for. But since I'm not really a designer, I don't really know if the solutions I'm going to provide are a real issues needs to be solved by Microsoft or am I just imagining it to myself? So just pick something you love and this way you'll know how to think and act like a customer when you're selling the product. The next thing you need to consider is commission and that's I think pretty basic but different platforms have different commissions on whatever you're getting paid. The beautiful thing about Microsoft is that most of the times you don't really have to make any payment yourself because the customer already inserted his payment information to the platform you're building on. So you just need to you know ask them to make the charge for you so you don't have the hard process of getting the customer to really 
take out their card and starting to pay you. So that's good, but usually these platforms take commission for that. Most of our services are built on top of Shopify and they take anywhere between zero to 20%, really depends on what you're doing. I know that Wix takes about 30% commission and it changes from one platform to another. So just make sure you take that in mind and pick something you can afford. The next thing you need to consider is documentation. You want to make sure that it's going to be easy for your developers to work with this platform, no matter how big and how much potential you see, if there is not clear documentation, you can't really build for it. So just make sure that before you run into a project, give your developers to have a look at documentation, make sure you have everything you need. If there are something that are impossible, you need to reach out to the platform and see if it's possible. So documentation is also something you want to consider. And then the last thing you want to consider is just traffic and maturity of the platform. It might be very exciting for you to jump into a platform that is very young, but if there are not enough paying customers, if there's not enough traffic around it, if it, there is not enough attention around the platform, then you might be building for a dying product. You want to make sure that's not something you do. And this is again a balance because if the platform you're building for is over matured, then it's going to be much harder for you to penetrate the market. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but ideally you would like to identify these emerging platforms where they're still like before right before it gets exponential and right then and there if you build a product there is a good chance it's just going to explode with the platform okay so it's not really gambling but you really need to assess where the market is heading and build in the right time and place okay guys so now that we understand what is microsas and what do we need to look at when looking for microsas platform let's talk about my top five up and coming platforms for 2021 and 2022 number one we're going to talk about figma now now, if you don't know Figma, you're probably living in a cave, but it's pretty much Photoshop. And if you really don't know Photoshop, just close the video and go search Google or something. So Figma is pretty much like Photoshop. It's a tool built for designers, actually, and non-designers that allows you to create different mockups and designs for your business. It's a really awesome tool and you should check it out. And Figma recently launched their community tab, which it basically allows you to add different add-ons and different apps to your Figma designs that allows different developers to build these different add-ons. It can be anything from UI kits to icon sets or different designs. A lot of things you can do, things related to video, audio, it's really depending on whatever the add-ons are and you can as a developer build these add-ons to Figma. The beautiful thing about Figma is that right now the billing is external which means that you as a developer need to charge your customers externally and not through Figma which means that as far as I understand it and I might be wrong here but right now you don't have to pay Figma any commission for the add-ons you build. Now just to give you some stats about Figma, Figma have more than 4 million users and not only that they have 39 million visitors visits per month to Figma and the commission as I mentioned is fairly low as far as I understand. Now I couldn't get an exact number of how many add-ons are there on the community tab so you can search it up but it's still fairly new and it seems like this app is taking over so it's going to be big. If you're a designer maybe it's a good platform to explore to build your solution for. Moving on to number two, Shopify. Now, yes, Shopify is huge now. It's a huge company. Everybody knows it. Everybody who's around e-commerce understand this platform. And yeah, it's pretty crowded now. There are over 6,500 apps in the App Store, but there are more than 2 million stores. So the ratio between apps and stores is still very, very big. They also changed recently the percentage of commission you need to pay from 20% flat to 0% for the first million dollars annually. And after the first million, you're just paying 15% so that's a massive massive discounts on these commissions so you're probably asking yourself why are you saying that Shopify is still a very good platform to building even though it's saturated and matured and huge now the thing is Shopify always releases new APIs and new functionalities that you as a developer can take to whatever direction you like and come up with a unique solution so again you don't want to build something that is already overcrowded and competitive like SMS or reviews or upsells you need to come up with something unique depending on the new API that Shopify are building. For example, just this year, they released subscription API that allow developers to charge or make subscription apps for the Shopify native checkout. I apologize for the noises around us. We're in Tel Aviv, so we'll do our best to keep it quiet. Ellie? 
try to edit those. So yeah, that's why I think that Shopify is an awesome, awesome platform to get started with. I do think that there are still a lot of opportunities there. Just to give you some extra data, the Shopify App Store actually have 58 million visitors a month. That's a huge, huge number. And you need to know that, just to give you again some extra details, Shopify said in 2017, that's long ago, that an average store have six apps installed on their app and Shopify Plus Store, which is the enterprise level plan on Shopify, have 14 apps. Now, I guess that because Shopify is doing a lot of optimization for merchants to install more apps, I'm guessing that now that these numbers went up. So if you take the 2 million stores and you know you multiply them by the six apps, you get 12 million installs simultaneously. And this is just taking the worst case scenario. So you really just need a drop of water from this huge sea of stores to really generate enough revenue for you to sustain yourself. Moving on to the next platform that I find super, super exciting. How exciting? I just bought two pieces of it so I can explore it and see if I'm going to build anything to it with our company. So this platform is Oculus. Oculus or any other VR devices. The reason I'm going with Oculus just because you know it's backed by Facebook and Facebook is a huge company. If you don't know what Oculus is, it's pretty much a console that includes two uh, sticks and like something you put on your head. I don't know if you call it glasses or goggles or whatever. And then your entire world around you just changes. If you haven't tried it, you should. And the thing is right now, the way I see it, there's mostly gaming things going on there. And the, the opportunities there are really endless. You can do so many new things. This is like the internet 3.0 or 4.0 or something like that. Again, the limits there are endless. And if you really take it to a business standpoint, I think it's very, very immature. And there's tons of opportunity there. You just need to come up with unique solutions. By the way, it doesn't have to be about business, it can be about different skills, it can be a lot of other different things you want to teach people, show people, play with people. There's endless opportunity there. That's why I think it's so beautiful. I did some research before filming this video and it seems like there's more than 57 million VR users around the world. Right now in the Oculus App Store there are more than 1,000 apps and 7 million visitors a month and Facebook takes a 30% commission if I got it right. So again, very exciting platform. I myself am going to explore it and if anything changes in the future I'm going to tell you about it and you know if I'm going to have something on the App Store I'll let you know about it. So yeah Oculus very exciting check it out when you have time. Moving on to the next one Slack. Now if you don't know Slack again you're probably living in a cave but it's time you move on with your business to Slack which is a messaging app that includes an open API for developers to build whatever add-ons they want to really automate communication processes within the business. So you can really integrate it with everything. Right now in Slack in the App Store there are more than 2,400 apps. The reason I find Slack exciting is just because most of the add-ons are free and I think not enough business people or businesses understand the potential in this app market. Now just how big it is, Slack again and this is all from Google have 156,000 paying customers all right and the App Store got 131 million visitors a month. Now that's a huge 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 market. I didn't find anything about the commission but I did read a case study. I'm going to link it down below about someone who built his first Slack add-on and got very quickly to $80,000 in monthly revenue. So you can see the potential there. You just need to come up with something that is really unique and solving business problems. And if you can help automate it or just include it as part of the messaging system of any business, it can be very effective. And there's plenty of businesses on Slack that would be more than happy to pay for the add-ons you're going to build. All right, moving on to the final number five is Google Workspace. Now, the reason I'm talking about Google Workspace, by the way, if you don't know what Google is, then uh, I, I, I don't know. Well, what should I say? Yeah, you probably know about Google. And the thing is, Google have this suit of tools. It's Gmail, it's Drive, it's Google Meet, and, and a lot of other things. Most people don't know that, but there is a place called Google Workspace Marketplace where, again, different developers can build different solutions for the Google suit. And the beautiful thing is, everybody uses Google. I don't know anybody who doesn't use any Google product. That's like super rare. And there's plenty of opportunity there. I do think that many developers don't understand the amount of traffic that is in there. And I think that people don't appreciate the amount of exposure your product can be on. Now, even if you don't want to build your micro SaaS specifically on top of the Google Workspace Marketplace, you can just create a very simple integration and get massive exposure this way because I do think there's tons of opportunities there. Just to give you some dry analytics, there are 89 billion visitors for Google. I think that's not a fair assessment because that's not the traffic that is getting to the marketplace, but still, you know, it's Google and there's massive exposure. So this is why I decided to add this as number five. It's a point 
mind for consideration, but I do think that there is so much opportunity there if you just find a way to find winning keywords and expose your product to this huge market of Google. So this is just for consideration. It's a little bit different than the other four, but still, I think it's huge. Just to give you an extra tip, by the way, about finding these opportunities on different platforms, you can really give your developers to run these scripts. Most of these platforms have autocomplete. If you type in two or three letters or more, you're going to get an autocomplete of the most searched keywords in that platform. And again, if you want to make it better, also ask them to export the amount of results you're getting. And then you're going to get a huge list of the top search keywords with the ones with the less results. And then you can build for it. Just, you know, a point of thought how to move forward in this huge world of apps and add-ons. I think that's it in terms of the top five and, you know, really how to look at Microsoft in a way and how to decide where to go, what to build, and, you know, just some extra stuff that might be interesting for you. All right. So I just want to wrap up this video with a bunch of honorable mentions of different platforms that I think are still huge and there's tons of opportunity there. They didn't make it just because I don't find them as exciting as others, but you guys might. The first category, let's say, is product management. If you look at products like Trello, ClickUp, Jira, Asana, all of these markets have huge marketplaces where you can really build integrations for and get massive exposure for your business. Jira is more technical, Trello is simpler, Asana is kind of in the middle, and ClickUp is actually younger. And I think there's tons of opportunity there because they don't really have an up market yet. But if you can create an integration, you can get massive exposure because they're big. The next category I think would be website building. You can look at WordPress, Wix, Square, Webflow, tons of others. Again, usually they have some sort of, of up marketplace. You should check it out and you know decide for yourself depends on what you do what you love again and the other things that I mentioned earlier in the video moving on to the next one CRMs if you look at all of these tools that help you manage sales processes within the business Salesforce HubSpot pipe drive, you can list on and on. And again, if you're coming from the sales world, that's probably going to be a great fit for you because you're going to know exactly what's missing. I'm not picking those because I don't really have much experience in sales. And the last one is e-commerce. Again, Shopify is the top one for me, but you can look at Wix again. You can look at BigCommerce, WooCommerce, Magento. Another one that is up and coming and very interesting that I didn't mention is Cafe24, which is a Korean company that is now trying to get global. So again, plenty of opportunities. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the videos please if you have suggestions for other platforms that you think are better and i missed out if there are any things you need to consider before jumping into one and you think i forgot also mention that below and if you have any questions comment or please guys if you just like the video for me if you like me or you know if you just like the video that would be much appreciated again if you guys want to schedule a call either with me or my awesome sister ruth just make sure to check out our clarity link in the description below and i'll see you on the next video bye bye